In the past decades, immigration has become one of the most important issues in American society. Although the concept of immigration is not new, the way the topic has been treated has evolved with changing political climates and public sentiments. In the United States, the past decade has seen a significant increase of 31.2% in the foreign-born population between the years 2000 and 2012. One in every four children in the United States lives in an immigrant family, and 89% of these children are citizens. Public interest and focus on immigration has likewise increased, turning immigration into a polarizing topic within the United States. Although there are those who believe immigration is something that only policymakers and immigrants are explicitly affected by, Immigration and immigration policies have a wide range of consequences for every citizen in America. Due to immigration's encompassing effect and the status of America as a wealthy and powerful country, the United States as a government and public has a humanitarian responsibility to redefine the way it perceives and treats immigrants, specifically undocumented immigrants, through analyzing how we define the term immigrant in our society and media and changing our perception of who should be responsible for this topic. To fully understand immigration, one needs to examine its history. America has been a country built on immigrants. Starting in the 1600s with the Pilgrims, immigration and immigrants have played an integral part within the United States. During the 19th century, the majority of immigrants came from Western and Northern Europe, bringing around 4.5 million Irish migrants 5 million German migrants, and around 25,000 Chinese migrants, motivated by California's gold rush. Within the century, there were also anti-immigration groups, one being the anti-immigrant, anti-Catholic party, also known as the Know-Nothings, who illustrated how resistance against immigration is anything but new. The end of the 19th century, between 1880 and 1920, brought an influx of 20 million immigrants from Central, Eastern, and Southern Europe, the peak of immigrant admission. This was later declined during World War I. During World War I, Congress passed legislation requiring immigrants over 16 to pass a literacy test as well as passing the Immigration Act of 1924 that created a quota system allowing 2% of the total number of people of each nationality in America in accordance with the 1890 National Census prohibiting immigrants from Asia while favoring those from Western Europe. Post-World War II was additionally a time when more, more immigrants were allowed into the country. However, with nationally affecting events such as 9-11, the treatment of immigration was highly altered. 9-11 brought the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, formed in 2002 following the Homeland Security Act replacing the Immigration and Naturalization Services. With these changes, immigration changed its focus from policy reforms to national security concerns. The way that immigrant has been defined in the U.S. is parallel to Frederick Douglass's discussion of slaves' exclusion in Americans, America's notion of freedom. Both groups, slaves and immigrants, have been actively excluded and dehumanized in American society. Although undocumented immigrants are the invisible skeleton of the U.S., their de dehumanization has created false stereotypes that the public, especially the media, have a responsibility to disband. One common misconception is that immigrants are uneducated and take jobs away from hardworking Americans. The truth is that immigrants have a diverse educational background. In 2012, 11.6% of, immigrant, 11 of immigrants had a master's degree, professional degree, or doctorate degree compared with the 10.8% of the native-born population, and 69.4% of the foreign-born population attained a high school diploma, GED, or higher. Facts like these get lost in the problematic rhetoric of today's media and political debates, producing an ignorance that generalizes individuals and devaluates their unique background as each immigrant story holds. By refusing to call others out for their problematic language, even if one isn't personally saying anything, it is still contributing to the hateful cycle that has tangible effects on large groups of people. This mirrors Young's and May and Strickwarder's perception of responsibility. 
that even though one may not be directly attributing to a problem, being a part of the system makes them responsible for what happens within that system. Jagger would argue that not stopping this rhetoric continues to an, continue, contributes to an institution that promotes negative views of immigrants, which overall makes a difference in the policies that are set forth. Therefore, as Ashford would agree, everyone holds an individual responsibility to the portrayal and treatment of immigrants, not just the media. The media should serve as an educational and trustworthy source to the public. However, instead of teaching morals as Rory, Rory, Wordy has intended, the media sources depict false images producing negative sentiment, sentiments regarding immigration. These public sentiments drive policies, following Douglas's idea that negative sentiment, negative focus of these minorities creates negative views of them. Even though theorists like Singer focus on the outcome, others like Walker believe that the foundations of justice and inequality need to be considered and focused on which is the thought process that the media needs to focus on as well. Everyone should care about the topic of immigration, as everyone is affected by it. Businesses, when, where an immigrant is either the employer or employee, hold a partnership with the non-immigrants they work with, which Aristotle would argue means that those within that partnership hold a responsibility to care about this topic as well. In addition, the public holds responsibility on a humanitarian level. As human beings coming from a wealthy and powerful country, Americans have a responsibility to stand up and protect others' human rights. This is a right to feeling safe, something that the current political and social climate has not allowed immigrants to feel. As Ardent would argue, all members of society should be involved with this issue and view it as a moral dilemma due to the collective responsibility that everyone holds. Immigration affects everyone, and the way that American society defines an immigrant makes a difference. Therefore, everyone, not just the media, holds a responsibility to care about the actions that are taking place within this controversial issue of immigration.